celebration how's everybody doing everybody doing all right Gene look at this crowd I was gonna say Gene uh, didn't have a mic but Gene doesn't need one he, do, he does not need one <laughs> all right so here's what we're gonna do on your program we've put all of the announcements on the program but there are a couple things that are left off so please Read your program and read the announcements, especially if you're a first-time guest. We are now they're glad you are turned down, Gene. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the the class 301 that was supposed to be tomorrow has been postponed till Monday, April 22nd. So we're going to do that Monday, April 22nd. So if you're planning to come to the 301 class, that's the one where you actually get where you actually get plugged into stuff that's happening at Celebration Beach Church. Uh, find your purpose, right? Find your purpose. All right. The second one is this. Uh, some of you may have seen this week, um, it was on the news, uh, the Rodriguez family uh, lost everything. With a house fire, they lost everything, all of their possessions. Uh, they left with, uh, with just what one change of clothes and they lost everything. And so I've talked with Gordy, and, and we're going to support them a little bit. If you'd like to know how you can possibly support them uh, and help them out, go by the information table. There's a sheet over there with stuff they need, gift cards, uh, stuff like that. So uh, it's always in our heart to reach out to uh, people in situations like that. All right, now, Rob, where you at, Rob? Now, here's what I would say. Uh, Anybody would disagree that your senior pastor is pretty creative, right? I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Absolutely not. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. And so, uh, you know, that's one thing I love about Gene. He's not a, <laughs> he, he's not, there's a lot of things he's not afraid to. But anyway, he, he's not afraid to take a chance. He's not afraid to do some things differently. But generally, generally, 
uh, when we do things that are different, there's always a purpose. And so today, I'm, I'm uh, milking to get Gene out front so he can take the picture. He's our photographer today. So, <laughs> so today, we have the ukulele fest. And it's going to be... It's going to be awesome. Is anybody surprised that Gene wants to learn to play the ukulele? No one is surprised by that. So he's maybe the most excited person today. But these guys behind you, and I will formally introduce them in a minute. These guys behind you do a lot of charitable work. They uh, come out and they play for different causes uh, on next Sunday. What time is it next Sunday? 6.30. Next Sunday at 6.30, they will be having a they will be playing at St. John the Evangelist Church, and they're going to be having a fundraiser for the Baker Senior Center. All right? A wonderful, wonderful cause, veteran. especially if you're a veteran. Especially if you're a veteran. So, we are going to present them in the name of hugs to the Baker Senior Center, a check for $1,000 in their name to support the charity that they're working for. So these, these are the kind of things that, these are the kind of things that not we do, that you do in the community uh, that makes this church just so absolutely special because you are the church and your heart is always in those sorts of things. So we're going to start off, we're going to get a little music and then we'll, I'll be right back. In his hands, he's got the whole world. 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 In his hands, he's got the
congregation, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. It's another day for us to, to give and to share and to just show you what you mean to us. God, we're proud this morning that we're able to partner with this amazing local group to reach out to those in need in our community, especially our veterans, Lord, the ones who have given so much and who are now in their later years who need us as well. God, we pray as Rob comes and shares with us that sometimes there are times when you need to to step up. Sometimes there are times when we need to do more. Sometimes there are times when we need to just decide that we're tired of sitting on the sideline and we want to get in the game. So God, we ask that you would bless this group, the Hugs group. Also that you would bless Rob as he comes and shares with us. God, we give you this day. It's a beautiful day. Lord, let us go and do something beautiful with it. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. All right, let me introduce to you, because we're thrilled today to have our service conducted by the local Naples group that goes by the acronym HUGS, H-U-G-S, Happy Ukulele Group of Strummers. That's creative. This Gene wants to be in that group already. The subgroup on the stage today is, uh, is the performance element of HUGS called the Kala Four String Strummers. HUGS goal, their goal is to educate and entertain while pr promoting what I'm told, the most popular instrument for hobbyists in the world, the ukulele. There are thousands of groups like HUGS worldwide, but I think we've got the most talented group at our service today. This organization, just so you know, they do many charitable, civic, and spiritual services, and they do this year-round. Miss Bobby Schuster leads the Call of Four String Strummers. <laughs> as well as the entirety of the Hugs group. And I want to introduce in the back Rob Wild, who has orchestrated this, <laughs> this program today. And we just want to Give them our best. Let them know that we appreciate what they're doing for us and for the community. I give you the Hugs Group of Strummers.
Ocala four string strummers. Let's hear it for them. <laughs> Well, that having been said, can I get an hallelujah out there somewhere? Hallelujah. All right. How about a praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Ah, I love it. I happened to uh, uh, meet Leonard Cohen, who wrote that song. I think it took him five years to, um, to compose. He used to wax eloquently at a, at a coffee bar in uh, Montreal. And uh, he had a great saying. He used to say that... Uh, God gives cracks or lets cracks in family structures so the lights can shine in. God's light can shine in, and it certainly does. I have to say one thing, looking at you out here, and you don't have to stand up and say it, but I'll say it for you. You look marvelous. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is, uh, are you glad you came today? Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Gene normally asks that at the end. I'm asking at the beginning because I don't know what you'll say at the end. I guess I'll say, are you still happy that you came today? And don't let the papers scare you because the one thing that Pastor James said was, remember, they want to beat the Baptists to the pancake house, so make sure that you're on time. Interestingly enough, uh, one of the other songs we did imagine Yoko Ono said that um, a dream by yourself is only a dream. A dream with one person is reality. A dream with 1,500 <laughs> of your closest friends is heaven. <laughs> uh, and also, the um, uh, getting back to hallelujah, the lute is a very distant relative of the, of the uh, ukulele. It had 10 strings. They shortened it to, to six, I guess, so it's easier to, to learn. But, um, uh, and allegedly, King David uh, played the lute. My name is Rob Wild, and I'm the non-musical part of the, the group. And the, um, the way this all came about, and to show you the divine provenance that, that, that is thread through this, the Hugs group actually started right here at Celebration Church uh, in 2015. Uh, one of a, a lady was here attending the service, and she saw another woman strumming her ukulele on the outskirts. They, they uh, connected. The group got together. They used to play at different people's homes. And then eventually, they played at the original uh, senior center which now, of course, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's on Immokalee uh, past 75, and it's a year old, and it's just a magnificent facility. And of course, like so many people in Naples, uh, I'd hear them talking about community centers, senior centers, and you'd say, who would need that in Naples? Everyone belongs to a development. They've got uh, all kinds of facilities, recreation, but the main purpose of it is to uh, fight isolation and, and loneliness, which uh, particularly in, in senior citizens is quite prevalent. Amongst veterans, it's very prevalent. Uh, and they have, uh, I think they have two World War II veterans there, as well as uh, several Korean, and, and of course, like myself, several uh, Vietnam veterans. But we, we ended up, we were, lived in Tampa for 25 years, uh, quite serendipitously, we, uh, we ended up in Naples. Literally, someone knocked on our door in Davis Island in Tampa and bought the house, a true story. And um, we decided to, to come to Naples. I didn't really know the purpose. Uh, I think I do now, and it, it's, it very much follows. Uh, ironically enough, the first time I came here, the, 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 the message was the... Um, you know, everyone should have a purpose. Uh, so I think, I think we found it. But the first uh, weekend we were here, I came, I came here, introduced myself to um, Pastor James. And of course, as you probably know, he has this huge, huge hand. But the minute he reached out that big hand and shook it, we had an uh, immediate connect. Uh, I mentioned to him about the, uh, the ukulele group and then <clears throat> we've talked further. 
We're doing a concert, as he mentioned. I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the commercial pitch uh, at the end, but we're doing a concert to support the veterans programs at the Baker Senior Center. They have some wonderful programs. They can use some upgrading. And um, we were blessed with being able to bring in two of the literally top acoustic groups uh, in the world. They were on a world tour, and I knew they were coming into Miami. I called them, and uh, both groups, one's called the Bird Watchers. The other one is a wonderful guy from Alabama, Kirk Jones. He's playing with two people who last year, Vinny and Noreen Mungo, Last year, our, our concert was in a Presbyterian church in Clearwater, and we actually lift, asked the, the attendees to lift both Vinny and Noreen up because we didn't expect either of them would be here. Um, and miraculously, and it is a miracle, they both uh, are in remission, and they're actually playing three dates with, with Kurt. So we're just, uh, we're just thrilled with that. So one thing led to another, and... Um, uh, James finally said, gee, you know, maybe the group could come and play five or six songs. And I said, yeah, I think that'd be great. And he set me up with uh, the new music pastor, James Sullivan, who I keep telling with a name like that, I could get him elected mayor of Boston. Uh, wouldn't they be surprised, as he said. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we set up a lunch. They love to go to the Cheesecake Factory. I'm sitting with James, and in comes uh, James Sullivan. In comes Pac the Pastor James. I figured he was just coming in because he was hungry. He sits down, and he says, um, the Pastor and I were talking, and I expected to hear him say, we don't think that's a good idea. And he said, do you think they can play 45 minutes? I said, yeah, I'm sure they could. And he said, well, we'd like to have you do the whole service. I said, great. So what are you going to do with the other 15 minutes? And his equally big finger said, that's your 15 minutes. So I said, gosh, um, what do you think I should say? And he referred me to Mark 13, 11, which says, <coughs> when you're delivered up to testify, <laughs> when you're delivered up to testify, do not worry or premeditate what you're to speak. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. So that's pretty good backup, because if you don't like what I tell you, <laughs> you can blame the Holy Spirit rather than <laughs> Pastor James and, and uh, Pastor Gene. But I, I didn't take that to heart. So obviously, uh, I did premeditate and I did plan. And my testimony is very simple. And, and, and I say testimony and message because someone said, are you preaching? I said, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be that bold. So the message I give you, as they say, you know, the finger comes right back at me. But the, I don't think there's any more comfortable city in the world than Naples, Florida. That's for sure. Uh, it's an older community, a lot of retirees. There's more money than in most towns. Uh, there are some zip codes with the highest income in the state of Florida. And there's others that, that are um, still high, but not at that level. We've got weather that, other than the occasional blip, in the hurricane or storms, that you can do just about anything you want to do. I guess the word that we would uh, apply to it is comfortable. It's comfortable. This is comfortable. I've got to tell you, I came here this morning at 7, and I, we really should do a time-lapse photography because <coughs> the amount of work and how quickly it happens to, to do this is quite startling. Uh, when you think of it, if you come to a concert here normally, you've got to lug your lawn chair, park. Here, it's all set up for you. And if you don't want to take it down, somebody will take it down. It's pretty comfortable. It's very comfortable. Uh, I, I said to um, Pastor Gene, after two or three times, I said, you know, it's, it's almost too comfortable. I said, it's, it's so easy for people to come here. And he said, well, would you rather they be here or at home? I said, well, I guess here. And he said, well, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to put thorns on the chairs or, 
uh, to make them uh, do chair aerobics? I said, no, I just, uh, and that's the purpose of it. I said, you know, I just think you could probably get, you know, some more life in it. And um, he said, well, if you want to come and stand on one foot and be uncomfortable, that, that's up to you. But uh, one thing that, that, that comes to mind, although, is if the impact that, that the pastors have and we have is just capped on a Sunday, it's limited and literally stunted because they can't do it alone, preaching to 1,500, 10,000, 20,000, no matter what it is. Billy Graham used to always say uh, he can talk to millions, but if he can get one to impact on 1,000, it's as effective, if not more effective. So I myself have made a commitment, and it's, uh, it's like giving a, a New Year's resolution to 1,500 people. I told Pastor James he wants to do a men's group. And I said, James, when this, uh, all this stuff with the three festivals in, on the next weekend, Clearwater, Sarasota, and here, uh, I want to put the same amount of energy that I give that into building your men's group. And uh, in addition to that, you know, it's easy to come one hour here, to schlep down to Goodlift Frank on the, on the Tuesday afternoon, but you might be, have a golf date or pickleball, or Wednesday night when there's untold number of things happening. Uh, that's out of your comfort zone. But I think I, I, the church wants to, to, to grow those. Another thing is small groups. And small groups, again, it's uncomfortable. You've got people in your home you may not know, topics that you may not be familiar with or confident in, uh, and probably no wine and cheese. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's out of the comfort zone. But we have to get out of the comfort zone. It's like the parable of the talents. And the sons invested it, and the one didn't. He just buried it, and it stayed there. Uh, and it was taken from him. So to, in order to, um, to better serve the Great Commission, we have to be more involved, we have to have more community, we have to have more activity in uh, these type of things. You'll hear more about those, and please, the, the main people to do this are people that are either full-time residents or maybe nine months because because you're the basis on that on that we can build the foundation and then when the people come down they're snowbirds they just enhance it so I can just say that I'm in and um, I'd like you to be in too you'll hear more about this are you still glad you came <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, let me just give you a little, um, I won't say a sales pitch. Uh, we have a concert next Sunday evening, 6.30, like I said. Um, we've been blessed with two of the best groups. They've, all, they've both been on America's Got Talent. Uh, one of them's also been on American Idol. So it's fantastic. Uh, the, the owner of our major sponsor is a very committed Christian. And he said, Rob, when I told him we, we were doing this, he said, look, uh, we want as many of those people from that church to enjoy that event. So uh, he's subsidizing half of the, of the ticket price. It's very reasonable. Tickets are $20. It'll be $10 today. Uh, there's a pack of four for families. That's $20. It's $5 a ticket. Uh, what you save, put back in the offering. But please, do your offering first. But we're right over there, and we would uh, love you to support us. We'd love you to come, not just buy it, because it's a fabulous event. And uh, our, veterans, our veterans deserve it, and I think you'll have an amazing evening. So, let's close our eyes, bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for this time, and we thank you for the ability to, that we've been given to impart some of what we do and, and some of our, our talent on this, on this amazing body. 
We ask you to touch these people and let those words resonate, that we can get more involvement, more community, more uh, uh, effort to make the Christian walk easier and more meaningful. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Give it up for the local. Give it up for our local hugs group. Just as a as a reminder and a thought of uh, obviously uh, what they're doing is benefiting the Baker Senior Center uh, and the veterans portion of that. Would all of our veterans please stand? If you're a veteran of any portion of service, please stand. And I'm a one. Thank you for your service. And uh, you know that Celebration Beach Church will always stand behind our veterans. And uh, I want to give it up for Rob, who kind of took my thunder, because this week we were going to talk about stepping up and everybody stepping into their service. And we were going to do the, the uh, class 301, which is talking about how to find, how to find your heart, how to find where you can step into service. And so that was amazingly appropriate. So, Rob, I'm going to have Rob close it out. Don't forget, uh, find the yellow buckets. There's a lot of people in need. Not only, don't forget the, uh, the Rodriguez family. Uh, so, uh, we just thank you so much. And God bless you. And Rob. I'd like to uh, raise up particularly not only these great group of musicians, because I always tell people, you know, they don't just get a call and show up. They practice hours and hours and hours, literally, for uh, each occasion. But uh, I'd like to raise up the, the people who put this amazing thing together, because having being here and watching it all, it's, um, it's quite amazing, and particularly two young fellas named Tommy and Noah, because I arrived about 7.15, and all I'd done is bought all this, and I had to say, I don't know, I don't know, about 20 times. And I said, just open it like it's Christmas and, and make it work, and they did. So, um, and also raise up these amazing pastors, because uh, as James said, uh, Pastor Gene, amazingly creative. Uh, of course, he's the Don Rickles of the pastoral life, but um, and uh, I didn't even bother to try to do any jokes because he's a really tough act to follow, uh, but I, I will say that James had a lot of confidence in my message, but one morning about 6.30, he must have been up all night, he called me and he said, Rob, I didn't tell you the rules, he said, it's a city facility, no politics, nothing off color. And I said, gosh, now I gotta throw away that whole, yeah. that whole message. But um, anyway, uh, we'd like to raise up also our, um, our veterans and please, after the offering, please come over. Like I said, we, uh, we, really, wanna <clears throat> we really wanna bang out next Sunday night because it'll be the beginning of a lot more. Everything goes to the veterans and uh, it's, uh, these two groups are really, really, uh, quite worth honoring, so please, we're, we're over that way. So let's close our eyes, bow our head. Lord, we thank you for this time, this beautiful day, these, these, these amazing artists, and, and this church, which serves so, so many needs. Please let the message resonate that, that, that we can rise up and, and do more. And uh, until we meet again, we say, all God's people say, amen. 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 There'll be more. Please, please, there's uh, the, the Cala four string strummers will entertain you with three or four more of their wonderful songs. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you for coming, everybody. That's it. Next week, we start a new message series called Loaded Words. Can you guess what words we'll be talking about? Probably some of them you'll share today. Probably before you leave the parking lot. So everybody be a little patient with everybody. Thank you for coming, everybody. It's always a great Sunday. We can, we can salute our veterans. We'll see you next Sunday.
Ukulele Band, take us away. And I was compared to Don Rickles. Not really. That was so what I have to call everybody? You hockey puck? And then when Don Rickles on. <laughs>